hope you're all doing incredibly well. It is a very dark and overcast day in Minnesota and I'm feeling super cozy so I figured I would just sit down and have kind of a little chatty moment with you guys. I tried to brighten it up a little bit with like a candle and some Christmas lights that are like not at all my style and I don't really think it worked but you know we're just gonna go with it for now. But yeah, as I said, this is going to be definitely more of a chatty video for sure. I wanted to talk to you guys about my current read and then some things that have kind of been on my mind in relation to that a little bit. But yeah, just talk about some subjects that have kind of been floating around in here. I'm definitely one of those people who's always like, you don't need to use like Facebook as a diary and like pour your heart out and stuff. But when it comes to YouTube, I feel like I can be a little bit more chatty and vulnerable because you people like choose to be here so I hope that's okay. I'm not gonna be getting like insanely deep or anything like that but I just want to talk about a few things especially because if there are people who are kind of in my position I want them to know that like they're not alone. Yeah just some random topics. This video is going to be very chaotic so I hope you don't mind. <laughs> in other news look at how beautiful this mug is. I absolutely love moths and oak trees so this was just it speaks to my heart a little bit. I love it so much. It's from Fablewood Goods. I will have the shop link down below. I'm not sure if these specific ones are still available, but there are other designs that are absolutely stunning. But the link should automatically apply my discount. If it doesn't, the code is HONEY10. So I definitely encourage you to shop some stuff. And then of course my cutie bookmarks and candle and a few other little goodies are also from there. So definitely check them out because I love it so much. <laughs> So yeah, first and foremost, I know that you saw me reading my Bible this morning. It is Sunday, so I did watch church earlier, Stephen's at work, and then I read Luke chapter 10 because today is December 10th. And if you don't know, there are 24 books in the book of Luke, so starting December 1st, you can just read one chapter a night and finish it by the time Christmas rolls around, and it literally just walks you through the life of Jesus from his birth to his resurrection. So it's a great starting point for anybody who wants to like read the Christmas story, if that makes sense, but I'm really enjoying it so far and I'm really excited to get to Christmas, which I will talk about more in just a minute. Next thing I wanted to cover is my current read, which is The Screwtape Letters by C.S. Lewis. And you guys, this book is so good. So, okay, look how cute my little bookmark is, though. Isn't that so pretty? I ordered it from this cutie little Etsy shop. I have two more of these arriving today. They're going to be different ones, but they're so pretty. But anyway, so I am reading The Screwtape Letters by C.S. Lewis. I am on chapter 21, so page 111, and I am annotating this one because you can't read C.S. Lewis and not annotate, in my opinion. <laughs> but I actually first heard of this one by my friend Sandy, whom I love so much, but I read Mere Christianity earlier this year, and it was definitely my favorite book of the year. Highly, highly recommend. So good. And then after that, I actually discovered because as I'm sure some of you know, I'm kind of new to the whole like reading bookish community kind of a thing. So I didn't know that C.S. Lewis has like a whole ton of other books. And then I saw Sandy post about this one. She did a video on it. And I think it was either the title or the thumbnail that said like a book about demons. And I was like, intrigue. <laughs> and so I was looking at it and it sounds it is fabulous. This is written in the perspective of a demon named Screwtape and he is writing letters to his nephew Wormwood who's another demon on how to get his patient to fall from faith. So this whole book is like an instruction instruction manual on how demons get us to make wrong choices and to fall away from God and to just basically slowly stumble into the kingdom of darkness and it is just so eye-opening and so good and so raw and deep and just it covers things you don't really think about and it's just all the good things. I'm loving it so much. I will just talk about one part that I really really loved that I read a few days ago and I read this and I was like Steven come here. It was just so good. And again, this is from the perspective of a demon. So reading this, I had to remember that every time he says the enemy, he's talking about God and not Satan. So it's kind of a weird like mind twist that you kind of have to adjust yourself to get used to. All the healthy and outgoing activities which we want him to avoid can be inhibited and nothing given in return. So that at least he may say, as one of my own patients said on his arrival down here, I now see that I spent most of my life in doing neither what I ought nor what I liked. 
more on that in a minute. And then the next part that I really enjoyed, which was just on the next page, says, Murder is no better than cards if cards can do the trick. Indeed, the safest road to hell is the gradual one, the gentle slope, soft underfoot, without sudden turnings, without milestones, and without signposts. Gosh, this is so good. The part where he was talking about like his patient getting there and saying like, I spent my life doing neither what I ought nor what I liked. Because before that, he was talking about part of what demons do to trick people into just ha like being miserable is like inhibiting people from experiencing joy. And joy in Christ, of course, but also just like enjoying life in general. And the reason why this part, I guess, stuck out to me so much, because some people will read that and they'll be like, okay, yeah, like it's good, but it doesn't like hit me. It hit me because for many years, my husband and I were part of an environment where it was like any kind of recreational activity was kind of frowned upon. Like if you weren't doing something to improve your future or improve your spiritual growth or improve your finances and you're wasting your time and that was it i don't know <laughs> you know of course personal growth and caring about your future and stuff like that like of course that's important but it definitely became kind of like an idol honestly and it kind of sucked the joy out of a lot of things and put guilt on us a lot when we wanted to do things that were fun. We stopped doing a lot of things that we enjoyed. I literally stopped reading fiction for 10 years. So that's kind of why when I came back to reading, I kind of just wanted to go all in and like join booktube and bookstagram and like do the dang thing because I have been like starving myself from that kind of joy. <laughs> So reading that was really like, it kind of hit me right in the heart that I've been suppressing that kind of joy from my life for so long. I don't know, I thought it was just a really interesting perspective about God made beautiful things for us to enjoy and things for us to do that are joyful and happy and things like that. And of course, life isn't just about being happy and doing joyful things, but it is a part of it and it's okay to embrace that. And then the next part that he was talking about, about how murder isn't whatever if cards will do the trick. I don't remember exactly how it is, but it's like, dang, like even the smallest thing can be a slippery slope for somebody. Like you don't have to be an ax murderer to be a horrible, horrible person. Like you can be a horrible person while doing smaller things, if that makes sense. So that was just really eye-opening to me as well. Obviously in my q and I talked about how I'm not quite at the point where I can share my testimony because there are people who are part of it that I'm scared that I might hurt by sharing it, but I will say that I was a part of something for many years that taught a lot of very wild, interesting things about scripture and about God and stuff like that. And so reading stuff like this is very different to me now because for so many years I didn't believe in that kind of stuff. So what I'm trying to say is that I'm going through an interesting spiritual process by reading C.S. Lewis who has a lot more like classic and traditional beliefs about the word and I'm really enjoying it. I'm really loving it and it's very eye-opening and educational and beautiful and it's just been a whole experience. So I am very excited to see how this ends because it's kind of going along with the storyline of Wormwood having his own patient and Screwtape talking him through how to trick his patient because right now his patient is a believer but he's kind of lukewarm like he goes to church but he doesn't like really practice much and he hangs out with kind of a rough crowd so i'm curious to see where this goes with this patient and how he turns out and what it is that either was his downfall or could have been his downfall and how he overcame it and i am reading this one a little bit faster than mere christianity because it has kind of a plot point i read nothing but personal growth and spiritual growth books for 10 years it's very hard for me to get through books like that because they don't have a plot but with this one it's a little bit easier because there's kind of a plot sort of going along with it so i'm really enjoying it though and I highly recommend C.S. Lewis. Now on to something a little bit more, I don't know if heavy is the right word, but I guess kind of heavy. Not really. I don't know, kind of, maybe. <laughs> so with C.S. Lewis, I absolutely adore C.S. Lewis. I think he's fabulous. He has so much wisdom to share and of course a beautiful mind. Narnia, obviously, I think we all love. I don't know how anybody could watch Narnia or read Narnia and not like it. Like it, that just doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> And my favorite book is Once Upon a Wardrobe, which is written by Patty Callahan, but it kind of 
goes along with the Narnia storyline, not the storyline I guess, but it's about a girl who has a little brother who wants to know where Narnia came from. And this girl, her name is Meg, she goes to Oxford where C.S. Lewis teaches and so she interviews C.S. Lewis on where Narnia came from. And she's very like mathematical, very intellectual, whereas C.S. Lewis is very imaginative. Well, also intellectual, but also very imaginative and uses his heart and his imagination. And so she's having kind of trouble catching on to how he came up with this idea. So it's just really beautiful. I highly recommend. All of this to say, I really love C.S. Lewis. I love that he's imaginative and intelligent and enjoys fantasy and enjoys Jesus. In being on this journey that I've been of kind of leaving that old Bible study that taught all those kind of crazy things, is trying to sift through like teachers and authors who are actually teaching the truth and not just motivational speakers or teaching things that actually are not the truth. I don't want to name any churches but there are some that have millions of followers that I don't think is really teaching truth to people. I follow all different kinds of you know like teachers and faith leaders and pastors whatever you want to call them and there's one in particular that I've been following for a while because she she used to be very 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 deep into the new age and the occult and so was I and so she's been really helpful to me but she came out with something talking about how if you indulge in fantasy or read fantasy books like you are playing with demons and you're opening the door to darkness and just like all of this stuff and I was so taken back because I was like wait, what? Like, I've learned so much about Jesus through these stories. I mean, two of the greatest fantasy stories that exist being Narnia and Lord of the Rings were both written by Christians, and so I was just, like, so shocked. And then she came out with this video where she was interviewing another pastor, and this pastor, like, I didn't watch the whole thing, but it had talked about how he doesn't recommend C.S. Lewis and all of this stuff, and I was just so shocked because, as I said, I feel like C.S. Lewis especially and Tolkien have really encouraged my walk with the Lord and helped me see so much truth when I was blinded by a lot of the New Age occultism and witchcraft and stuff like that and so it was just really interesting to me. And so ever since I saw that a few weeks ago my mind has been kind of racing with all of these questions and I've been praying for discernment and it's been interesting and my husband and I actually talked about it for like two hours one Sunday morning. He really was great. He assured me very solidly that there's nothing wrong with you know reading fantasy stories and it's it's not going to lead me astray for sure because part of my testimony that I will share with you was that I was into witchcraft really hard when I was younger and it wasn't because of the fantasy movies that I'm watching. It wasn't even because of Harry Potter and I know a lot of Christians are anti-Harry Potter and I understand and that's okay but I watched Harry Potter a lot when I was a child and it never influenced me to try witchcraft. I mean every kid kind of imagines pretending to fly or like being able to move stuff with their mind but I don't think think you need to watch Harry Potter to have that. Like I was pretending I could fly and like imagining having superpowers long before Harry Potter was ever a thing. So like I don't think a child needs that kind of influence to have an imagination, you know? But I digress. So none of those things ever influenced me. I mean watching Disney movies never influenced me. What did influence me to get into witchcraft was the movie called The Craft. That is what like just ushered me into hardcore witchcraft and I wasn't doing the light and frilly witchcraft, okay? I mean all witchcraft is evil and there's nothing light about any of it, but I wasn't just doing like tarot cards and Ouija boards and horoscopes. I was doing like spells that involved my blood and cutting my hair off and using it for certain things and like I was in it, okay? <laughs> So it's not like I'm coming at this from a place that doesn't have any kind of experience or empathy for people in that. When I share my perspective about like fantasy and Christianity and stuff, it's not like I don't have experience or knowledge of some of the things that people argue about because people will say it's wrong to watch fantasy movies or read fantasy books because they're literally like practicing the occult and you know if you have that conviction then by all means but from my perspective that's not what the bible was talking about when it talks about don't perform sorcery or witchcraft to me that's what i was doing that's 
real witchcraft. That's the tarot cards and the Ouija boards and the spells and the enchantments and like that is what the Bible's talking about. I don't think that when the Bible was warning against sorcery and witchcraft it was talking about having an imagination with like elves and hobbits and dwarves and unicorns, you know what I mean? Like, I don't think that that's what the Bible was referring to. To me, I see a difference between fantasy magic and real Wicca magic. I don't know, I guess I kind of just wanted to share my perspective on that because number one, it's something that's been on my mind a lot, but also number two, because this is something that Christians are so divided on. I'm part of a group on Facebook. I think most of the people in it are Christian, but somebody had asked like, hey, how do you feel about like Harry Potter and Ooh, the conversation got heated because there were some Christians that were like absolutely not you're inviting demons like that's satanic and devil worship and that, like hardcore no and then there are other people who were like well we love Jesus and we like Harry Potter we just see it as fiction because that's what it is and then the people who were in the first group were attacking them and like it was just a whole thing it was crazy it was crazy yeah <laughs> And again, I understand why people have that perspective with Harry Potter for sure, but for me, like I said, it never influenced me to be like that because I had an aunt who told me, hey, just so you know, like, this is fiction, it's not real, and I was like, okay. And that was kind of like period case closed for me. <laughs> so I think that people just have a responsibility, parents have a responsibility to teach their children what is real and what's not. And I find it also very interesting that in the bookish community there are Christians who are like very very anti-magic books but then they also read books about murder. So it's like I mean both are are both wrong. I mean it's kind of come it to me it kind of comes down to what we're convicted about because murder is a sin as well but you can read murder mystery books and I would imagine it doesn't influence people to commit murder. You know I can read fantasy books and not be influenced to want to practice magic and I can read murder mysteries and not be influenced to want to murder anybody so I think it really just comes down to personal conviction and this is where I have like kind of a god story that's really cool so I was actually praying about this a few days ago I was literally on my knees right there on my floor praying to god like i was like yell praying if you've ever done that <laughs> and i was just praying like lord make this clear to me because i've i don't feel convicted about it and but now i'm starting to wonder if i am or if maybe i'm just feeling guilty for doing something that other people feel convicted about and i was just so confused and nervous you know that i've been doing something that he didn't approve of and i had saw somebody in this bible study group that i'm a part of post this thing that had said like god told her to repent of reading this occult book and it was a waste of time and it's harming your walk with the lord and she explained the plot and i was like i've read that book it was a fantasy book that i read a while ago and i saw a lot of biblical allegories in it and i really enjoyed it and so i was like oh my gosh like am i in the wrong so i was praying about it and i was like lord like make this clear to me i need to know like am i in the wrong is it wrong to ring fa read fantasy books or is it is it okay like am i okay and so i was just like hardcore praying literally the next morning the next morning you guys this girl that I follow on YouTube and Instagram, her name is Melissa Doherty. I cannot recommend her enough. She's so fabulous. She does videos on apologetics and theology and she's just wonderful. And she posted this video that was titled like, is it wrong for Christians to watch fiction that has magic in it? And I was like, <laughs> I watched the video. It's very short. It was only like five or eight minutes long. And she basically just said what I just said. She was like, I think it comes down to personal conviction because I don't think that when the Bible's talking about sorcery, it's talking about, you know, these fantasy fiction stories where the magic is not real. Of course, there is a line. Of course, you know, I'm not going to go watch the craft now. So she was just talking about how there is a difference. And if you feel convicted about it, then by all means, don't watch it. Don't read about it, whatever. But I think that there's a difference between reality and fantasy and we have the responsibility to know that. Like I said, I'm not going to be watching The Craft. I, I won't be watching Practical Magic because that also has real references to real witchcraft. And Harry Potter is kind of like on the fence for me because there are real references into it, but there's not real magic that I'm aware of. But JK Rowling does identify herself as a Christian. She's part of the Church of Scotland, I believe. And she 
purposely put Christian allegories in the Harry Potter books. There's actually scripture on the tombstones in the last few movies as well. I understand why that is a hot topic for Christians. I totally get it. But for me, I, I enjoy the stories. I enjoy the movies. I've never read the books, but I enjoy the movies. They're very nostalgic for me especially, but I also find a lot of moral lessons in them, a lot of great quotes, a lot of things, like I said, that are actually very biblical. <laughs> and, but there's also things that it's like, mm, that one's kind of a hard one for me personally, but I understand why people are against it. I totally get it. Like I said, I stayed away from anything fiction for 10 years and part of that was because I knew that anything that had real witchcraft references to it was going to be a stumbling block for me because I actually came out of the occult. Another really great person to follow is Allie Ragsdale on Instagram. She actually posted a thread similar to what I was just talking about because somebody had asked her, how do you feel about watching fiction that has magic in it? And she said the same thing. There's a difference between what the Bible calls magic and what fiction is. So it was just, it, to me, that was a lot of confirmation that there is a difference and I don't have to like cut myself off from things that I enjoy because somebody else feels convicted about it. But again, that kind of goes back to what I was talking about in here because when he was talking about when I got to hell, I realized that I did nothing that I enjoyed or that I should have done. Part of what he was talking about was like, you know, you stopped listening to music so that you could listen to the right kind of music. You stopped reading books you enjoyed so that you could read the right books. And you stopped hanging out with people you liked so you could hang out with the right people. And while I do think that there is a balance, of course, I also think that it can fall into legalism very quickly if we kind of cut off anything and everything that we have enjoyment of. Oh, I have been rambling for a hot minute, but I warned you that this was going to be chatty, so. <laughs> <laughs> but I did actually update a few of my videos about Akatar because I do love the storyline of Akatar so much. I do. I mean, the characters are fantastic. The storyline is incredible. There's just everything that happens, everything about it is so good. But <laughs> I cannot say that I recommend those books because of the sexual nature of those books. And it's such a bummer because, like I said, I loved the stories. I loved the characters, like Nesta is my, she's my, I don't even know what to call her. She's just, she's me, I'm her, like I just, I love her. I've never related to a fictional character so much in my life. But <laughs> A Court of Silver Flames was so gross, had so much smut in it, was so nasty, and it totally ruined the book for me. And it would have been a five out of five probably four and a half out of five just because the writing wasn't my favorite. Because of the smut, I had to drop the rating and I want to recommend these books to people because of the story, but I can't because of how gross they are. And that is just a huge conviction for me. I just, I can't read books that have smut like that in them. I just can't. At the time, I kind of pushed it to the side because I was like, oh, I love the story. Like, I'm just, I don't love it, but I'm just gonna like get through it and I I don't necessarily regret it but at the same time it probably wasn't right of me to do that so I put a new little update like pinned comment on all of my videos talking about how while I do love the stories I cannot recommend them because of that so I just wanted to like publicly come on here and apologize to anybody who maybe went into those without realizing how bad they were going to be sexually particularly the last few books so yeah I guess those are kind of my thoughts about the whole fantasy Christianity thing my my thoughts might change in the future, I don't know, God might convict me, but at the moment he's kind of just shown me that fantasy is part of the imagination that he gave us and as long as we're not like violating his commands then it's just fantasy. <laughs> so I did post a few things on my Instagram I saved in my new age highlight I believe if you want to go see but I did save some articles and posted some screenshots of some things so from other pastors and the like so anyway yeah that is my thought on that that has been kind of rattling around in my head that I wanted to talk to you guys about. I'd love to know your perspective. There was just one last little thing that I wanted to hopefully quickly talk about before I close this out with showing you some letters that I'll be writing. I have been thinking a lot about family traditions and as I said earlier I would come back to the whole concept of I'm excited for Christmas but we are doing Christmas a little bit differently this year and that's um, both good and kind of bad, I guess. I don't know. The reason that we will be doing Christmas differently this year is because for Thanksgiving, we always have it at my dad's house because he has the biggest house and it's usually him, my stepmom, um, my two step siblings, my brother, and then my mom actually usually comes over too. And this year for Thanksgiving, I got a text that said that my two step siblings would not show up if I was coming. So, um, instead of my dad kind of 
in letting us show up if we wanted to. Um, he just canceled family holidays for the foreseeable future. So we'll be doing things differently. So we went over to my mom's house and for Christmas, I'm actually pretty excited because we're going to be doing our own thing for like the first time. I'm really excited though because this year it'll be me, my husband, my mom, my brother, and that's it. And it's just going to be really cool and I'm really excited to kind of start our own traditions and it'll be really fun. I kind of just wanted to bring this up because I wanted for anybody out there who has a broken family or family drama or toxic family, I just want you to know that you're not alone and that you don't have to put yourself in situations if you don't want to with family. I w I'm not going to get into like the reasons why my step-siblings don't like me, but all it really comes down to is the fact that I am a Christian. Really sad because I've done all I can do. For any of you out there, um, I would encourage you to take the first step to initiate conversation and to maybe apologize for anything that maybe they're hurting from. At the end, I want everybody to be able to say that they tried, and so I just encourage you to reach out and to be the first one to extend a hand and to show love. It might not turn out the way that we want it to, but that's okay. So I'm just looking forward to, like I said, being able to establish our own traditions because I've changed so much in the last couple years and I just have that dream now of having like a sweet, wholesome family Christmas. You know, I imagine like me in the kitchen with my children and my mom baking while the guys are watching football or playing something and like I just want a wholesome family Christmas and I've never really gotten that before so I'm just really excited that things are going to be changing and they might change again in the future you know but for the time being it's just kind of becoming more of a reality that like we're adulting and we get to establish our own legacy for stuff like this and you know we don't have kids yet we'd really appreciate your prayers for that to have children soon being able to kind of like put down roots and establish things before they're here is really exciting so i'm just hoping that we'll be able to start some wholesome traditions and fun things to do and so if you have any ideas let me know because I would love to implement things from all over the place if I can. Again I basically just wanted to bring this up and talk about it to let you know that if you come from a broken place you don't have to keep it that way. You can start your own tradition, you can start your own family and you can be different and you can be set apart and it's okay and it's gonna be scary at first and it's gonna be hard and emotional and tears will be shed but it'll be worth it and you're not alone and if you're going to be alone on Christmas or any time, please feel free to message me on Instagram, reach out because I just want you to know that you're not alone. You are loved and you are worthy of love. You are valuable and you are wonderful and I love you so I hope that you stick around because you are worth it. So I really just wanted to kind of wrap this video up by saying all of that because it is something that has been on my mind and on my heart and I didn't realize that my upbringing and like my story was abnormal until I told a friend. It was like four years ago we had a huge drama explosion at a family holiday and um, somebody said something really awful to me and I told my friend about it and I was like yeah like my whatever said this and but it's okay and they were like no, Harmony, it's not okay. And I was like, and I just started sobbing because that was kind of the first time that somebody told me that like what was happening to my family, what was happening in my family was not okay. It was not normal and that shouldn't be normalized. And I just broke down and sobbed and that was kind of me waking up to like things have to change because I don't want my children to go through what I did. So, and it's not like, you know, everything about my family is wrong or messed up. You know, I'm not trying to throw my family under the bus. I'm just giving you my honest story, or at least parts of it. Yeah, that was just kind of a wake-up call to me. <laughs> at the moment, it's just kind of something that I'm still kind of realizing and walking through. So, I talked to my husband about this and I was crying and I was like, I just want like a wholesome family. He's really on board and he's excited to change the future of our family as well and to have things just be better and beautiful and wholesome and God focused and it's just a very exciting time. Yeah, I said a lot of words to try to get um, a smaller message out but I hope that it was well received. Anyway, that was kind of all I had to say. Like I said, the screw tape letters is amazing. I highly recommend it. My next read is going to be what I think is called the holiday romance. I think. I saw it on Instagram recommended by a friend and so I literally ordered it today. It is a smut-free romance story. I'm very excited. It's about these 
friends that travel every year from Chicago to Ireland for Christmas and apparently there was something that happened and it's just a whole romance story. Apparently it's really funny so I'm really excited to read that but I literally just ordered it like a few minutes ago and it will be here tomorrow I think. So that will be my next read after I finish this and then I'm really hoping to read The Bear and the Nightingale but I feel like I can't read that until we have like a steady amount of snow coming in and right now we have like this much snow which is so abnormal for Minnesota and it'll probably be gone in a few days because it's supposed to get up in the 40s again which is insane you guys it's never like this usually by this time we have like three feet of snow it's crazy it might be God helping us out because we still have to finish one side of our fence <laughs> I just feel like I can't read The Bear and the Nightingale until it's snowy outside. So I also recently kind of joined a little bit of a cool like Bible slash book club with some friends on Instagram. I'm not going to share too many details because I don't know if we're like publicly announcing it or not, but I'm very excited about it and we'll be reading Ella Enchanted together in January. So I'm really excited about that. So yeah, those are just some smaller reading plans that I have coming up and I'm so excited. <laughs> So yes, again, I've been babbling so hard. So if you've made it to the end of this video, let's see, why don't you leave a snowflake in the comment because I need some snow in my life. That is all I have for you. To end this, I'm going to be showing some b-roll of me writing some letters, which I always find very pleasing and satisfying. So I hope you enjoy that. But otherwise, thank you so much for being here and listening to me ramble and talk about really random things. But like I said, these have just been on my heart lately. So I'm hoping maybe you got something out of it or it gave you something to ponder yourself. But I am a fantasy girly and I'm just embracing that. And if God convicts me otherwise, then I will come here and let you know. I'm not really wrestling with it as much anymore. I'm pretty convinced that like God gave it to us as a gift. If I'm wrong, Lord, correct me. If I've given you anything to think about, let me know. If you agree or disagree, let me know. Like I said, I've kind of just been in the waves with this whole fantasy thing, but I feel like I've gotten a lot of confirmation that it's a gift from God to let us explore his word in a fun and different way. But I'm hoping and praying that the Lord just guides us all in truth. So let his word trump over mine, whatever I've said. And if he convicts you differently, then please, by all means, obey him and not me. He is greater than I. Listen to him, not me. I'm just sharing where I'm at right now. So anyway, again, thank you so much for being here. I love you so very dearly and I will see you in my next video.